first farm I bought, I took a move north, and uh, when I bought this farm, I guess it's probably, I'm gonna say 12, 14 years ago, something like that, I didn't know what to do with planted pine trees. They had planted pines on it, so I just left them alone. That's not the right thing to do. And uh, uh, Hurricane Michael pretty much took them out, but I'm gonna show you what uh, places I bought more recently after I figured out what to do. And uh, I, I, I love, silver pasture, and, 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 and it, it lends itself to silver pasture production very readily, but I did not do that here. This is sort of silver pasture like The guy that had, owned this farm uh, cut these trees for quail, quail population, and uh, I, I, I wish every acre I had was like this, and I like that better than I do open pasture. This is Hurricane Michael damage. We were, we were ground zero for Hurricane Michael, and it was a cat four when it came through here. We've never had, you know, uh, hurricanes are way of life. The Gulf of Michigan is about 80 miles over there. <clears throat> but by the time they get here, 300 feet up, 80 miles in, it's a rain event. Tropical storm, tropical depression, Hurricane Michael. So that herd of cattle that you saw on the corner up there is headed this way. And uh, it'll be here, they'll be here in about 10 days, probably. So they'll come through, through here? Yeah, we cross roads with them. Uh, and the four lane, I go under it down there, but the rest of these roads, we go across the road. And we, and we cross a bunch of them. I mean, this is a lot of paved roads through this farm. And uh, we, we, we block, you know, we put somebody on each end. And, I mean, it, uh, you know, that, that 1,024 cows, that's plus calves, they'd be across that road in seven, eight minutes. You know, they they standing there waiting. People ask how you drive them. Shit, you better get out of the way. <laughs> so this is uh, planted pines that we, I just ignored. I played like they weren't here. I did build cabins out there. We got cabins that we rent for tourism. But uh, uh, they were too thick. Hurricane Michael took them out, a lot of them out. I'm going to come back in and thin them some more, make them look more like that over there. My, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know much about stem counts per acre, but when I look up, I don't want to see three trees touching. Two, if two's touching, it's all right. If three's touching, that's too, that's, that's too much. That, that plant, y'all y'all have that plant, that uh, butcher plant, that tropical soda apple? Ooh, it's on Man, it, it's invasive. Huh? It's invasive. It's invasive. I hadn't used any herbicide in 20 years, but, uh, and I'm trying some things now with apple cider vinegar, but if I don't, if I don't get it worked out, I'm going to have to spray. I hadn't sprayed anything in, in 20 years. I'm not going to let them take the farm, you know. It's a member of the tomato family, nightshade, and everything loves them berries. You know, cows, hogs, sheep, goats, deer, coons, possums, birds, everything loves them little berries. And when they, when they defecate, you got another planting. Up here is our organic vegetable farm. They don't like them to call it garden. Organic vegetable farm. And, uh, I, uh, I, I don't allow you to ask any questions up there because I don't know the answer. <laughs> and it's embarrassing. <laughs> I, know the, I know the guy that runs it. <laughs> they, they, do, they do a real good job. It's about two, three people. Maybe sometimes maybe they have a little, somebody else will help them. And uh, we, we sell uh, everything they produce. We either sell it in the store or cook or freeze it or and sell it. We don't. Uh, we don't go to farmers markets and those kind of things. We we did for a while. That that was not. That didn't work for us. That little cabin you know, that I tell you about. Those are longleaf pines. That's the uh, indigenous species that uh, before pre-Europeans. I 
lot of these fences are overbuilt because I built them to contain sheep and goats as well as cattle. For a cow fence, that three strands of smooth wires is, is perfectly adequate. <clears throat> you won't see many she has some sheep over here. You won't see many sheep or goats. <clears throat> we got a contract grazing a 1,425 acre solar voltaic array about six miles from here. And uh, they are, there's our honeybees and our, our fruit trees. We just started planting fruit trees a few years ago. I'm going to plant more and more of them. <clears throat> and uh, we got a very talented. Uh, beekeeper, a third generation Mexican guy that is passionate about those bees. He does a great job. So you found that the high tension wire just is less maintenance than the solar power than, than the electric? I'd rather have, a, I'd rather have, a, we use solar when we don't have electricity. If I can plug it in the wall, I want to plug it in the wall. So uh, I mean, you prefer the high tension versus the electric tension? That's a high tension electric fence. Oh, it's electric. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I didn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Grab it and see. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh, over here, you can see an example of uh, using animal impact. We're not going in there because it's muddy, but this strip along here was uh, 30 year old pine trees the previous landowner cut before he sold me the property. That's where we use hogs to impact that land, and uh, there's a big drove of hogs down there, and we just move them back and forth, back and forth, and they'll prevent that from becoming a jungle. If you, in this country, if you, if you cut, cut over timberland, it goes back in as a, as a jungle. Using animal impact, we can prevent that. I buy chickens and, and guineas. In that set, he's feeding them with that green trailer. He loaded up by those tanks in town we looked at. Now they're feeding right now. All these poultry houses are on either skids or wheels. And we move them about once a week. Moving them does several things. One is it gives them an environment that's free of pests and parasites. If it moves that manure, that manure is toxic if it's all in one place. But if it's move, 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 it really makes a difference. We got a lot of, we take a lot of drone shots. You, you can see where we move the houses across the field. I don't know how you would do that. Now, we, we don't cut it and bale it. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I can, you know, because I've been on this farm all my life, I can tell we grow more and more and more grass. Uh, those are curlews, or I, ibises is the proper name. We call them curlews. And we didn't have them until we changed the way we farm. They, they got that long curved bill, and they, they, they probe for ground insects. <coughs> I just had the biological life out there to support them. Those are trees planted inside those little trees there. That's a big drove of uh, sows that are uh, uh, farrowing right now. In fact, they'll, they'll throw a bunch of little baby pigs out there. <clears throat> the pigs will stay with the mamas till we wean them. Uh, then we'll put them up there and break them to the electric fence. Then we'll start them move on, on the home. Here's that herd of cattle we talked about. 1,024 female cows. <clears throat> They've, uh, we're going to shut them up and preg check them. <clears throat> uh, the last, last two days of this month, they, they gonna, I got a guy coming who's got a sonogram machine. We'll preg check them. If it's light bread, it goes in the, the other herd. Heavy bread comes back here. If it's not, if it's, if it's, if it's open, then we'll, we'll a hamburger cow. Notice these swallows. Just 
you. That's, that's a sign of teeming with life. There's a lot of insects. <clears throat> it's amusing to me. There are people who are not close to the land. We talk about teeming with life. They think about Walt Disney, Bluebird, and a little bunny rabbit, and a fawn. And <clears throat> teeming with life means insects, rodents, reptiles, and, and, and it's all good. I like selling them. You see those posts out there? You know, those eight foot posts? That's a uh, Savory Institute. Uh, there goes the eagle. <clears throat> it cost a fortune for me to have that eagle come across here right now. <laughs> this is uh, cut over timberland, and we use an animal impact to, to uh, keep it from becoming jungle. That uh, is a uh, EOV. Eco eco ecological Outcome Verification. So we got a, a young lady that's trained in that. And once a year, she'll get out there and crawl around on the ground all day and come up with a report that shows you're making progress ecologically or you're not. So that's, uh, I told you they're putting down those uh, fiber octic cables, and I got them to give me the spools we're going to use them to make either tents or farrowing houses or <clears throat> something. All right, so this is, oh, 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 oh. This, this is a good place to show you something. That's before, during, and after. And those, uh, those cattle were put out there this morning. Tomorrow morning, they're going to be put right here. They, uh, they hammered this more than I would have preferred them to. It's all right. It's fine. And the rain caught them. But when they were out here, it rained a little over an inch. I'm not going to say they overgrazed it. They hammered it, but they did it all in a 24-hour period. To me, overgrazing means they bit it off, and two days later, they bit it off again. Two days later, they bit it off again. You, you, you kill your grass that way. You destroy your stand. Your, your EOV will show you going backwards. You lose in ground. Uh, the way we do it, move them. Uh, you 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 gain ground with you with the EOV. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Here, I'm gonna say we gain ground here. Now we did more vegetative impact than I would have preferred. <clears throat> it was all done in a 24-hour period. When it puts back out, it'll it'll grow. Uh, overgrazing to me has got to do with duration, not impact. And it'll be 42 days before they get back here. This is, uh, they're, they're going this way. They're going to go through there where those cabins were. The way back down, we didn't go as far as they'll go. Come back down through here. Up here on the left, you'll see some uh, laying, laying hens. So those uh, chickens I showed you over there were meat birds. These will be layers. Different breed, different management, different feed. But this is part of that same with the hammer. It's uh, wet when they went here yesterday. This is an old pecan orchard. I'm 66, and we, I played in that pecan orchard when I was a kid. And the trees were like as big then as they are now. They, they dying now. It, it, uh, we, we, uh, I feel like we saved them. It was undergrowth. Big uh, countries don't compete well. Uh, Understur, you couldn't get through it. And now we've opened it up. I think they'll quit dying. Yeah, this grazing will probably make the trees healthier. Huh? huh? The grazing will probably make the trees healthier. Yeah, oh, it will. It will, because you don't have all that c competition. For Strangler vines is what kills them. <clears throat> they look like they mowed down just about everything, too. They're not being overly selective, are they? Uh, that's... Good point. It's putting them in, making them eat it is part of it. So this is what it normally looks like. This was grazed two days ago. I mean, it, hadn't, it has not recovered much. We just didn't hammer it as bad. Same size paddock, same herd. It just it just rained an inch and a half. It just didn't have that, that wet. These laying hens up here, those houses are uh, old cotton modules builders. For, for those of you from New Jersey, a cotton module builder is an, is an obsolete uh, piece of cotton harvest equipment. So I can I buy them 
the scrap iron price, which is about $1,000, and then we trick them out to make poultry houses out of them. Poultry housing, field housing, is a real issue. You know, I mean, it's, if, it's, if it's heavy enough to withstand the elements, it's too heavy to move. But these are, are my answer to it. They got wheels on them. It takes, a, it takes a tractor to move them, but it's not, you just drop a pin and move it. And they, they, those withstood Hurricane Michael. I lost some sheets of tin off the top, but they were very, very little damage. See how we got the fence around the dog in there? That, that's the answer to the eagle problem. Magic number on my mind. 